Hi, this is John, and this is the um, UKLS uh, traveling impressioning kit. It's the first of its kind, as impressioning gear is usually quite expensive to, f to begin with. Uh, I want other people to have a chance uh, impressioning, so I've made this box, and it will be traveling around the uh, globe, if possible. Check the um, UKLS uklogsport.co.uk for more information. I will give an explanation of impressioning in just a second. Let's first check out what's in the box. What we've got here is a block of wood to hold the cylinder, one glue clamp to hold it down to the table, One handle with a key inserted. A toothbrush to clean the key. A magnifier light with LEDs to check the impressioning marks. One Eddings 3000 to uh, mark the pin positions. Two, key, two locks, uh, these are ABUS C83, um, they are pinned uh, differently for each, so there are effectively four locks here. One box of key blanks. One file. This is a Valorba uh, Swiss uh, Cut 4. It's the um, preferred impressioning file. And one more file. This is a core, it's uh, ground away. Uh, it's used to uh, check the pin positions on the key. It's very useful for identifying the marks. One Allen wrench. This one is used for the screws on the lock of wood and on the handle. The keys to, to, the, to the locks. I've already impressioned uh, two of them, but we'll be impressioning two more, so the set is complete. This can be used to, do, to cheat, and it's quite useful for beginners. This is a 11111 key, it's just as an example. This is a chart uh, with uh, pin depths. This is the first cut, this is the second depth, this is the third depth. There's one higher and one lower, but they are not common and not used for in this instance. What else do you need in this kit? Well, you need one sturdy table. You need something to file on, like a piece of rubber. What's also useful? is a um, caliper. In this case, uh, Mitutoyo, one of the best ever made. But any caliper will be fine if it's not uh, with terrible tolerances. If you can measure uh, within a tenth of a millimeter, it's fine. I'm going to show you now how to set up the kit. Um, I'm left-handed, so I will be placing my lock right here. We take the block, uh, put it right there. Take the glue clamp. And clamp it right down. Once 
we take a, take a lock, put it right in, and tighten down the, the screws. It doesn't have to be very tight, but it just a little tight. We take the handle, put in a key, a blank. I use the permanent marker and mark the, the pin positions. These are the pin positions. We've got our marks um, and we can now start filing. Uh, we do this on the um, uh, rubber or what else you have. It has to be watertight um, because it needs to capture the um, brass dust. Now we clean off the key with, with the toothbrush. Here we have a 11111 key. We put the key in the lock. And just like uh, picking, we want the key pins to bind up. For uh, picking, we want very light tension. For impressioning, it's um, as much tension, as much uh, torque as you can get without breaking the key. But you have to get uh, used to it. Because the key pins bind, uh, they leave marks in the, um, in the brass blank. There are now tiny marks on position 4 and position 5, right in the middle of the, um, the blank. Now I've identified the location of the marks on the, on the blank. I'm going to start filing there to the second depth. This is uh, 7.2 millimeters. Now this key is a one 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 two two key, and rinse and repeat until you get to open, break the key, or uh, got a nine 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 key. One and four, three. One rule about impressioning is uh, when you're uncertain of if it's a mark or not, don't file. And also uh, measure more uh, guess less. When filing, make sure you're filing uh, straight on, not under an angle. Uh, this is important. Uh, the angled fi filing is only done for uh, wafer locks and uh, sometimes lever locks. There's no need to rush. Only in a competition I will rush. But when you rush, you make mistakes. When a position is uh, very cloudy or um, very dull, you can brighten it up by just a slight tweak. I would like that.
I keep filing on the marks. And I think I'm close, but the lock isn't open yet. So I just continue. I think I file too deep um, on one cut or more cuts as the lock goes to a full set. And that's okay for the newer generations. But for this one, it has uh, standard key pins and uh, spooled driver pins. Which means if it's a full set, um, you just file too deep. But you can keep on going and it will be good practice to keep on going. Because you never know what kind of driver pins these are. What else is interesting is the key is hard to retract now from the lock. The difference is high and um, edges are very sharp. We can mitigate this by using the diamond file and file these edges away, like this one. This is better. So after all this time, this is um, 888888 key. Um, I know for a fact that this lock does not have all key pins as an eight. So I'm going to start over. When this is happens, there's no problem, just start over. I use this tool uh, to check the alignment for each hole in the, um, um, in the core. There is a pin in this lock. So um, the valleys on the key must be uh, within the, the circles of the, the holes. It's quite useful because the marks also will be in the centers of the holes because that's where the pins are. Okay, um, I've broken the ski. If you can see it, the um, crack is right there. Um, and because this is uh, inevitable, I'm going to show you a trick to get the uh, broken key out. In this case, I've noticed the cracking and remove the key from the lock. If you are, if you, if you see cracking, yeah, just don't proceed because it can be a pain in the ass to remove. When you break one in the lock, break a key in the lock. Um, for this, it's very easy. Let me just break one in the lock. There. Now it's broken and it's in the lock. We get one of our uh, blanks and put it on the other side of the lock and push it in. And because there's only one key allowed in the lock at one time, it pops up. Use the pliers, remove it. Just like that. Here is another key. It's also about to break. Crack. Oh no, I pushed it too far in the lock. This one is a little hard to get out. Um, in that case, we need a kit like this. These are for key removal, for broken key removal. There we go. 
This one was a little harder because the, um, the peaks are not filed away uh, and they snag on the key, the key pins. I want to get an open on camera, impression open that is. So I will <laughs> keep on impressioning. That is, <clears throat> and that's how you impression a lock. When it's open, you yell "open" because uh, reasons. I've needed a few attempts. The last attempt, I cheated. Uh, at the end of this video, if you want to see it. I will show you how I cheated. A few more things to wrap this up. Um, this light, uh, please don't send it with batteries included because uh, air shipment will get uh, seized. Um, files are sharp. Um, brass dust is bad for you, so don't lick the files. Uh, don't file where you eat. Uh, also, um, files are expensive, so please be careful, put it in a shell so it won't get damaged. The keys you can keep or throw in the trash. Um, we don't need them anymore. What else? Uh, yeah, if you want to know more about depressioning, get the book. One of these, this is the book by Oliver Dirichsen. It has everything about impressioning, all the logs, all the things. It's quite an old book, so some of the um, knowledge is outdated. But still a good book. The other good book is Keys to the Kingdom by David Olam. It has uh, quite a lot of uh, tricks um, and it explains impressioning very well. And then there is uh, no substitute for uh, practice. A lot of practice is needed to get anywhere with this uh, scale. As ski blanks are expensive, please uh, only use as little as possible. Uh, these go for uh, 1 euro to 1 euro 50 each because they, these are genuine Abus. Uh, that will be all. Thank you for watching. Bye.